Welcome to Solutions Studio. This is a free series on C programming language. If you like these videos, please subscribe to follow along with this series. Also, please like and leave a comment and share the video to help spread this series. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in the previous episode, you know that we defined the attributes of a variable. And the attributes for a variable was its name, its type, its size and its value. For example, in this statement, we have the name of the variable as a, the type as integer, the size of this variable as the size of the integer could be one byte or two byte, and the value, which is 10. One of the important thing for the name of a variable was identifier, right? And in here, a is an identifier. Well, identifier has its own characteristics and attributes. And those characteristics and attributes are determined by storage class and a storage class determines an identifier's storage duration, scope and linkage. In C programming language we have different type of storage class specifiers such as R2, register, extern and static which we will be discussing in the coming episodes. For the time being I just want to briefly introduce you to storage duration which is the period during an identifier exists in memory. So some identifiers could exist in memory briefly for a brief period of time, some could be repeatedly created and destroyed, and others could exist for the entire program execution. We also have the scope for an identifier, and the scope determines where a program can reference an identifier. Some identifiers can be referenced throughout a program and some other identifiers can only be referenced at a portion of a program. For a multiple source program, an identifier's linkage determines whether the identifier is known only in the current source file or in any source file with proper declaration and this is mostly applicable as we said for multiple source file programs. And that's it for this episode. Stay tuned as we go into more details of all of these concepts in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode. And in this episode, we would be discussing about local variables and automatic storage duration. So the storage class specifiers are divided into automatic storage duration and static storage duration. We use the auto keyword to declare that a variable has automatic storage duration. And so such variables that are automatic, they are created when program control enters the block in which they are defined. And they exist while the block is active and when the program control exits the block, they are destroyed. And here I have an example of this temp variable. This temp variable is created and is only active within the main function. Once the main function has stopped executing and finished executing, the temp variable is also destroyed. Remember that only variables can have automatic storage duration and a function's local variables have automatic storage duration by default. So that's why we don't usually use the keyword auto for these type of variables. And so for this local variable temp, whether you use the keyword auto or you don't use it, it doesn't really make any difference because all local variables, they have a storage class of auto by default. So we can delete this part as well. Remember that automatic storage duration is a mean of conserving memory because local variables exist only when they are needed. And they are destroyed as soon as the block of code stops executing. Stay tuned as we go into more details and static storage durations in the coming episodes. Hello and welcome to this episode and in this episode we are discussing about static storage classes. In the previous episodes we discussed about the auto storage class and we said that all variables that are defined they are defined auto by default. So if you don't have anything written before a variable type, 
that variable type is auto by default. But we can also define variables as static manually. And this static storage class means that this variable count will still have its value when this function is executed and finished. So when you hit this ending braces, the value of the count will still be kept in the memory until the end of the program. So if this square function is called once again, the value of this variable count will be still available from the previous time with its previous value to this square function in the second time call. And that's how the value of a variable can be kept throughout the execution of a, of a program by using the static keyword. Also remember that all numeric variables of static storage duration are initialized to zero by default if you don't explicitly initialize them. In here we have initialized it to one, but if we didn't initialize it, the count would have a value of zero by default. And that's it about static storage classes. Stay tuned as we will cover static storage classes in much more details in the coming videos during this course.